Here's a famous problem that you see almost in every single textbook for how to find the zeros of a polynomial by factoring. The first thing I want to do is recognize this is four terms. So the best way to be able to approach that is going to be factoring by grouping. However, when I have my first two terms are separated by subtraction, rather than using subtraction, I want to change this to adding a negative number, right? Because adding a negative is the same thing as subtracting. Then I group my first two terms, group my last two terms, and now factor out the GCF from each of them. Between x to the fifth minus x cubed, the common factor is going to be an x third. So I can factor out x to the third power, and that's going to leave me with an x squared minus one. Now when I factor my second parentheses, I want to try to obtain an x squared minus one. It's very similar. So all I simply need to do is factor out a negative one, that's going to give me an x squared minus one. Now factor my grouping is factoring twice. You first factor out the GCF of your first two terms, and then you factor out the GCF of these two terms, because again, they're separated by subtraction. Again, you recognize they both, these two share a x squared minus 1. So now I can factor out an x squared minus 1, and left over is going to be a x cubed minus 1. Now I have a product equal to 0. So we can go ahead and use the uh, square root method to go ahead and solve this. Add 1, take the square root of both sides. x is going to equal a plus or minus 1. Be careful doing that over here, though, because if you add 1 and take the cube root of it, you're only going to get one solution. Since this is a polynomial to the fifth degree, we know there's going to be five solutions. So how do we solve an x cubed minus 1? Well, we recognize that that is a difference of two cubes. So the factor form of that is going to be an x minus 1 times x squared plus a x plus 1 equals 0. Now again, you are correct. x minus 1 is equal to 0. That is going to be one solution, which is a duplicate of the one we over have here. So we don't need to write it once, we just need to understand that has a zero exists with a multiplicity of two. But over here, we need to use the quadratic formula. So x is gonna equal opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c, all divided by two times a, which is one. So in this case, a one squared minus four is a negative three. Squared of negative three is going to equal to a negative one plus or minus i squared of three divided by two. So I have two solutions here. I have a third solution. So I can have this, I have negative one, and then I have one with a multiplicity equal to two. One, two, three, four, five. 